Well, it is, and and, and it comes it, it comes back to, and I, and I hope you don't mind. I mean, if you don't have a question, let let Terry know. But I just, I I really appreciate what you're saying, and I've said this before, and I, and I will say two two quick things on that. One is, none of none of of what this is about is to diminish anyone's faith. In fact, it is about reinforcing their faith. Yes. And I'll give you a proof, and I've never used this quote before. If you take the Sermon on the Mount, words are claimed to come from the divine through Jesus, Yeshua, uh, literally or not, the yes. meek shall inherit the earth. Now that seems to be, well, let's, let's, let's be brutally honest. Let's be cynical journalists, say, for a moment, and let's think of, it, of that, the meek shall inherit the earth. Yeah, right, when hell freezes over. Well, what I said to you tonight is that if we stand up and are competent with the law and claim and know who we are, then all these nations are Sister KVs. Once the presumption is proven false that we are not children and that, that, that the Roman cult cannot claim to be the parents, then legally <clears throat> it's game over. So literally the fulfillment of a prophecy that seems virtually absurd can be proven to be true. So all I'm saying is I, 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 I really appreciate it. I have one more thing to say, and it is an important, relevant thing. In becoming a trustee of a superior trust and behaving, one ceases, hopefully, to be controversial in ways that would otherwise uh, impinge or upset the kind of bridge troll mentality. In other words, what look, when you are a trustee of a superior trust, you can go and get all the paperwork, but the paperwork says do not detain, do not arrest. It will look like a license, it will look like everything, but the fact is at the end of the day, you're not upsetting the system, you're not upsetting the bridge trials, you're, you're basically going about your business. That, that is a non-controversial way of standing as, as a trustee. A controversial way, a challenging way, ultimately, up until now, because there hasn't necessarily been options, is to say, you know what, I'm not going to sign. I know I would do it under duress. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to renew my insurance because I know that they are holding the legal title. I'm not going to do my license because I know what a license is. Now, I respect the intent, but now I'm hoping that people see that respect and behaving as... Um, as ambassadors of knowledge means that you can do and go about your business without being the controversy, remembering that they want the controversy. The system needs the controversy. They use that as part of their illness. So I hope that little bit at the end is, I respect what you've done, great story, but as moving forward, you won't need to necessarily be driving without a license or driving without plates in the future because the system will say, do not arrest, do not detain. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do thank have you, plates. Okay. Oh, did you have yeah. another question, Greg? I just want to say I do have plates on the car. It's just that the registration itself was unsigned. So, but okay. the plates were and the tags were current. So that that Good on you. So thank yeah. you very much. I appreciate your insights, and I'll take that under under deep uh, um, consideration. Thank you, Frank. Good on you. Okay, we have a question from uh, the chat uh, chat room. Uh, uh, this Brian Wind would like to know what you think of the symbology on the medicine wheel photos. I'm not sure I'm asking that correctly. So if Whisper and Wind would like to be specific about that question, unless Frank, you... That's right. Well, you know I, I, will, um, I will say, okay, medicine wheel, um, uh, the wheel of eight, um, um, Symbology. Look, what came out of Babylon was a, a 12 house horoscope that when you look at the uh, symbols, connections between the stars and the houses, they don't match up. But when you actually go outside and if you didn't have any knowledge of horoscopes and you looked into the sky, the logic would be to divide into quarters and then to divide into eight. And that was the ancient sky of the ancients in terms of their view of the movement of um, planets and the, uh, and the moon and, and the procession, procession of the equinox. 
So really the horoscopes that we're dealt with today is to, um, like many things, to cut us off from being able to do what our, what our ancient ancestors were able to do, which was to look at the night sky and connect to the universe and that knowledge. So again, it's another example of uh, cutting us off from ourselves. So if that's kind of what you went, then hopefully that gives part of it. The other side of it about symbology. When you um, approach what we're doing, which is one of consumption rather than battle, one of stating that uh, by knowing who and what we are, we are everything. And so we are all symbols. We assume all symbols. Then the symbology that you see hopefully makes sense. If, however, you come from the angle that symbols uh, belong to like two teams and that they are being the puppet masters, which is precisely the way they've run, you know, they are the thoughts behind communism. They are the actions behind capitalism. They are the actions behind socialism. So they like us fighting between thoughts of communism, socialism and capitalism because they are the managers of the stadium. So we don't play that game. We are not only in the stadium, we're the entire system as well. So there is going to be symbolism that you see right throughout Eucadia, and it's not um, an attempt to be occultish, although simplistically people say, oh, I've seen these symbols and they're occult. No, we are sometimes making a, a notice to the powers that be that we are not here to fight, we're here to evict. <laughs> okay? So, again, I hope that might answer another part of your question. All right? All right, great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, we have one uh, over in the chat that has asked if it is necessary to photocopy an original um, presentment that's been sent onto an 8.5 by 14 legal size paper to match the, the deed bowl being, being uh, printed out on the legal size yeah, paper. Yeah, that's what I was saying before. You know, they send paperwork in all different sizes. You know, some people get summonses that are small, some get them large. It's just matching up so that it, it, it the the gluing of the deed pole to the gluing of the public notice match up. So there's no problems in doing that, none at all. Yeah? Okay, great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, looks like Ryan has another question. Uh, Ryan, did you ask your question? Oh, you have question? Also, an interesting question that, that ties into that. Does, does it have to be the same size? Like exactly the same size as the summons or other paperwork? No, no. It, it, all you're looking for is, is you know, if you've produced a deed poll, um, you, you know, you want you want their public face to be virtually the same as the deed poll. And the paper that you use for either the deed poll or the copy doesn't have to be legal. It, it, it Remember that the, the colour of the deed poll and the size of the deed poll is symbolic. When you right, send it in blue... According to the canons, yeah. then, then it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, that that wasn't my question. I just figured I'd ask it because it, it, it segued. What's wrong? Um, All right, what's the question? Yep. Well, you said something about uh, what people need to see is a hero, and I'm just going with the flow here because I honestly didn't expect it to go here, but um, I I vaguely hinted at before. I said I'm not going to get into detail on personal life right now, and I'm really still not sure. uh, as best I can, but... Um, just in the interest of time, at the very least. But um, I uh, actually have a court date coming up myself. Right. Um, it's not for anything that like I hurt any. I was hurting anybody. Um, yep. Uh, it, it, you know, it's I'm a good person. I, sure. <laughs> it's. I, what's the question? I, I believe that everything happens for a reason. Um, yep. Well, uh, I guess um, one of my first question is: Do all the do all judges in in the United States, like even just simple lower level misdemeanor district court judges, do they know about this stuff? No. No. Let me, okay, let me answer for you um, that in a bit more detail. We, we, we've discussed it before, but it's, it's worth reading. Um, the way in which they teach the law is that they, firstly, within the law is the truth. So embedded within vague references in case law, embedded in different interpretations of black stick definitions, embedded in jurisprudence, 
is the truth of the law that's been distilled down into the positive canons that you see on one heaven, okay? Because every lie needs a backbone of truth to stay afloat. But our problems has always been distinguishing between the truth and the lie. So that's, that's part of history. I mean, any, anything that's lasted for a long time is based on truth. But in their corrupting ways, they have corrupted enough to turn it into a lie. That's what I was saying about the definition of the word estate in Scripture. It's not saying the Scripture's wrong. It's just saying that in interpretations, they've inserted words, and that word corrupts just oh so slightly the meaning. So in the case of the judges, what, what happens is you go to... You go to a college, you learn the law, you graduate, you go presumably to be a public prosecutor or if you're good enough, they'll put you in a form a firm or you know someone. And then you spend a few more years and then if you've become a prosecuting attorney or you've ended up you know, working as a great defender, you might become a, a judge and then you spend another 10, 15 years. All along the way, what they're doing is you have to remember and learn the entire thing and then gradually they will give you clues that separate the rubbish from the truth. So that means that a, a lesser judge, a lower district judge, almost certainly is not going to know the whole picture. Almost certainly. As you get up the ranks, part of that is, is being given the ciphers to decode the knowledge you need to function at that higher level. But that's how they work. Um, so the short answer was no, and I've given you kind of the, the way that the, the legal system works. The first people they lie to, we always remember, the first people they lie to are their own. <laughs> so don't expect any of them to, to uh, be, uh, be switched on. But one thing will happen also in, that, in that, that aspect of being a hero. When you learn and you know your physical being changes and one of the incredible things will occur attorneys and even judges and definitely lawyers will be intrigued by you and go and do their own because they know but have not necessarily found a way to answer this question they know something's not right you can't do what they do on a daily basis if they are good and I think most of them are good and do what they do and not be affected by it. So you'd be surprised. So again, I hope I've answered those questions, Ryan. And if you've got more, you can always send me an email, okay? Okay, thank you, Frank. Uh, I do have some more questions coming through on the chat. Uh, okay. If someone has done the deed pull and uh, they receive a phone call requesting more info, um, do you have an idea of how to respond? I've not heard of that happening, but I'm... Um, sure. Look... Uh, Okay, we've, we've, people have done deep polls and there's like a string of things that, that have, well, say it's not a string, but starts, some of the things have started to happen. So let's, let's have a look at some of the, the classics. The simplest one, and this has happened to a few people, is that they send it back. Right, you just send it back. Um, well, if they send it back, uh, you send them, normally they have to send it back with something and either like uh, refused or not acknowledged, then you take a copy of that, whether it be on an envelope or an additional document or however they've done it, and you send back two uh, deed poles, but you also make a copy, remembering that once they've done that, you have allowed them to injure you. And what, I'll, I'll, I'll explain what they do and then what, how to respond and then I'll explain what the injury is. So if they send it to you, just make a copy of the thing they've done, send back two deep holes. Uh, another one that I've heard um, and has happened, um, a fellow sent one in and they came back and said, oh, no, health regulations don't let us accept because it's in blood. Okay, Sesta KV morphed into something to the present day. There is not an act of Sesta KV on the books in America. Instead, what we have is the Health Act. In other words, the act of fraud by which they create the Sesta KV is the argument that some lesser attorney used to say we can't do it. So obviously they're trying to use a fraud against a fraud. But it actually gets better than that. Under the UCC 
principles of signature and let me call up